Hello, and today I thought I'd do a quick ingredient spotlight, and I was asked to do this one uh, specifically. And it's a little discussion about pro, pre, and postbiotics in skincare. So I've been meaning to do one ingredient a week, so I kind of missed a week. So next week I'll do Centella Asiatica Sica Plant, and this week I'm going to talk about biotics. So probiotics are micro microorganisms that occur naturally in the body and on the body. They have a significant role in skin's health and appearance. So using probiotics topically for skin is really a newer found uh, area in skin care. It really hadn't been discussed much and they're still finding more and more out about it as we speak. So even just the amount of bacteria they thought were on the skin has significantly went up and because of that, there's been a lot of products really geared towards that. Some that have been around for a long time and some products which are new and some which are kind of capitalizing on the trend, like everything else. So uh, the normal human skin is a microbiome that is colonized by between 10,000 and 1 million different bacteria units per square centimeter. They can help prevent the growth of pathogen organisms and maintain the immunity and health of the skin. Especially when your microbiome is damaged, it can lead to a lot of negative things. Um, and then the diversity and type of bacteria is, is very varied by person, uh, by, their, by where they live, the environment they live in. So different types of bacteria, Staphylococcus or P. acnes are two different types of bacteria and those are just a couple of them. Uh, things like sun damage, pollutants, environmental pollutants, pollution, smoke, even things like laundry detergent, shampoo you use, skincare products are all different things that can throw the skin's microbiome into an unbalanced state. Uh, and an unbalanced state leads to things like acne, uh, dryness, redness, sensitivity. The major goal of biotics in skincare is to help restore that balance and allow your skin to allow for good bacteria to grow and the skin will remain in a healthy and balanced state. So really paying, paying attention to things like laundry detergent, harsh ones, harsh skincare products, skincare products that contain a lot of alcohol, drying types of alcohol, acids, Things like that are certainly well worth paying attention to and are very important, especially if you have some of those issues like acne and things like that. It can be a really good area to investigate. Obviously, biotics aren't going to cure everything, but if you're someone whose microbiome is out of balance and everything else is okay, that could be a big, big win for your skin if you start taking care of that. So you really want to strengthen the skin's surface because it prevents against further environmental damage. Uh, also stabilizing the microbiome enhances skin's ability and, and um, ability to stay and maintain proper hydration and moisturization. Diminishes factors that trigger sensitization, redness, and irritated skin. It can also help visibly improve uh, signs of dryness, including when your skin feels really just like tight you know that feeling? We don't want that. Also will help and restore and maintain a healthy pH balance to the skin's surface. Also can reduce the incidence of eczema and psoriasis. Also can help cell renew, renewal and cell turnover. It can happen a little bit faster. Skin heals faster and you don't have as many incidents of acne. So it's very important to have a good stabilized microbiome. A lot of times, if you don't use a lot of skincare products or in younger people, it can be naturally just balanced without really having to do anything, but not everyone has that luxury. Or sometimes if you're somebody that lives in a very sunny area, you've got that going on. So it's important to uh, investigate. And you know, if something's going on with your skin and nothing else is working, it's certainly well worth a try. So there's different types. So we've got probiotics, prebiotics, and postbiotics. So prebiotics are substances that promote the growth of beneficial bacteria organisms and inhibit harmful bacteria on the skin surface. Prebiotics are considered a kind of a food for bacteria which helps them grow. 
They can also be considered as like fertilizers for good bacteria, which allows them to increase in number and be more effective in the role of skin production. Uh, examples of those include uh, fructo oligosaccharides, which you see sometimes in products, galacto oligosaccharides, galacto oligosaccharides. I'm going with that. But you see them a lot of times as like fruit sugars. Uh, they're sugars or plant oils that are able to provide nutrition for bacteria on the skin surface, which constitute the microbiome. Thus, prebiotic skin care contains botanically based sugars and oils that provide bacterial nutrition. And I've got examples of all of these in a second. Um, one that I love that I'll mention right off the bat, the Inculus multibiotic contains uh, several different types. So a lot of products focus on like probiotics. And this one uh, focuses on all the types. I'm talking about probiotics because probiotics are a little bit different than prebiotics. And probiotics are really technically considered living organisms that are placed on the skin from uh, sprays or creams. Probiotics contain bacterial fermentation products, include yogurt, uh, kefir, kombucha tea, sauerkraut. Pro probiotics are technically living microorganisms. Um, and it's really hard to put them in skincare products because typically things that contain living probiotics are typically skincare products that actually need to be refrigerated or else they die because they're very, very sensitive. So you don't tend to see a lot of them, uh, in a lot of skincare products. So keep that in mind. But, um, a lot of times the laboratories will use inactivated bacteria, which can still help, but they're not going to be quite as strong as the things that need to be refrigerated. Um, these include uh, dairy propionic acid bacteria, lactobacillus, and bifidobacterium. So just keep that in mind. True probiotic skincare products really need to be refrigerated because they really can't contain preservatives because preservatives kill the bacteria. So it's kind of hard, but... Another very important point I'll talk about again is the packaging. That is a huge factor when it comes to this. Um, so like, here's probiotics for your stomach. I just started trying these recently because I always have like stomach issues, like acid reflux. So I don't know. I just started them like a week ago. So anyway, we'll see if it works or not. So far, my stomach feels pretty good. Um, squalane and probiotic. Moisturizer from Biosense, which I keep meaning. To, I think I've got a full size of it, too. Um, Kors came out with this mask, which actually I really like. Kors products, I've noticed, have a lot of fragrance in them. But this mask, I actually found to be rather gentle. So, And then Paula's Choice came out with their probiotic nutrient moisturizer, which it's okay. It The texture is a bit thick. So if you have oilier skin... And for daytime use, it's not my favorite, but um, Aveeno just came out with several new probiotic products, which um, are certainly well worth checking out. And then, of course, Good Skin Days, I've got to review their moisturizer next. I just did their vitamin C serum. Their moisturizer is great, too. So those are a few more. Then I've got some other products to mention, but the next category would be the next and final post postbiotic skincare products contain non viable bacteria products or metabolic byproducts from from probiotic bacteria. Postbiotics are molecules produced by good bacteria. Uh, so these are uh, the resulting waste from the bacteria. They're usually beneficial to the skin. Uh, this is the case example of lactic acid, a very useful postbiotic because. It's part of the skin's hydrophilic film, uh, which maintains its natural moisture. Postbiotics are produced during the fermentation process of probiotic bacteria. Um, and then examples of postbiotics include enzymes, peptides, uh, peptoglycan-derived muropeptides, polysaccharides. Why did I say it right there? I couldn't say it the rest of the time. Uh, cell surface proteins and organic acids. Postbiotics are, are not the newest of this. Uh, many skincare products contain uh, bacterial fermented products such as lactic acid and glycerol. 
Um, and the therapeutic value of those has been well established. Things like essences, fermented essences, which have been huge in K-Beauty for a long time. Um, the Neogen Micro Essence, I'll be reviewing that one uh, this week, is a great one. Absolutely love that one. The Cynic one is great. I don't know how I ended up with like four of these little bottles of the Dr. Jart, but this one, uh, this uh, essence just came out as well. And uh, a couple more, the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair and the Tula Probiotic Acne Clearing and Tone Correcting Gel is also a great one and certainly well worth checking out. Um, so what ingredients do you want to look for for this? Proven probiotic skincare ingredients include the species of Lactobacillus, uh, Bifidobacterium, uh, Vitriocilla, and then various ferments. You see lots of ferments, especially in K-Beauty products. Um, for sources of prebiotics, look for things like xylitol, rhamnose, glycomen, and oleogarsaccharides, which are in a lot of things. They're typically sugars, sugar-related. Uh, we've also got things like resistant starches, pectins, beta-glucans, uh, xyluglocysaccharides, polymers such as fructans, galactans, uh, carbohydrates derived from fiber, like you'll see like potato fiber or something like that. Uh, then we've got uh, lysate ingredients, which are also very beneficial to probiotic skin care as derivatives of probiotics. Lysates work in tandem to reinforce the skin's microbiome and diminish skin issues. And then I did want to make a note. Probiotic and biotic skin care products, the packaging is really essential to them because... They are very fragile. Uh, once you expose them to light and air, and if you continually do it like via jar packaging, each and every time you open it, they just get more and degrade more and more. They're like vitamin C, they just degrade over time. So packaging like in an airless pump is essential or a tube. So just keep that in mind. And if you do use something in a jar, try and use it up as fast as possible or transport it into an airless jar but biotics are very, very fragile. They will break down very fast in the presence of air. So things that protect them, package them better are the way to go, even if it's a little bit more money. I don't know, the Inky List is super affordable and this is one of my favorite products from them. Um, and it's well packaged and it's got a nice combination. So I'd highly recommend this if you're into checking these out. The Inky List one probably would be my number one recommendation. Uh, unless you're going for the ferments in K-Beauty and then that's a whole nother thing. But um, anyway, so I wanted to take time to discuss it because it is such an important area of skincare and it's a kind of a newer area and kind of becoming a trend. So it's not always good when it's a trend, but you know what, there'll be some products that'll be here five years from now and then a lot of these probably won't. The good ones will be around and the poor ones won't, so kind of have a way of weeding themselves out so okay so anyway those are my thoughts on biotics pre pro post and i'm interested in hearing from you guys or if you have a favorite biotic type product what is it and what do you like about it so love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow thank you so much <clears throat>